Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today I have my brand new hoodie on. If you get in real close, you can see it is from Disney World. I just went to Walt Disney World and this is from the movie Coco. And if you have not seen that movie, you should see it. It's fabulous if you love the afterlife and are interested in what happens, life after death. It is a wonderful, beautiful story about the afterlife. And it's so, I love it. Coco is probably one of my top three favorite all-time Disney movies, if not my number one favorite right now, okay? So it's a big deal for me. So I am going to be sharing with you, this is actually going to be a channeling video, even though I'm chit-chatting in the front end. I'm gonna channel with David Bowie because on the way home on the airplane, I watched a BBC program called Finding Fame about David Bowie. It was like right there on the scroll list on the, the airplane screen thing. And I'm like, I'm gonna watch this, this is interesting. And I find it fascinating. Again, the, 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 it's like a, it was like a program. I think it was like a 60 minute program or something. BBC and it was called Finding Fame, David Bowie. So I figure since I've channeled him quite a bit and I really like David Bowie, like his vibe is super ascended and very enlightened. That's how I would describe him. And yeah, I like it. I haven't talked to him for a while, but since I've already channeled with him, he's got a playlist here. I thought, well, good, I could watch this, this program and not feel like I'm tainted because I don't like to watch a bunch about people that I channel because I want it to be all fresh, like I want the experience and the communication I'm having with them and what they share with me to be really authentic. And if I know too much about them, I feel like it kind of taints it. You know, I already expect them to tell me about things. So with David now, I know a little bit about him, so I felt like I could watch that program. It was interesting. So if you're a David Boy fan, hey, thanks for being here. So let's chat with David. He says, it took you a bit. He said, it took you a bit to talk with me. I'm like, yeah, I know, it's been like two days, okay? Like jet lag. Oh yeah, the jet lag from Florida to Minnesota is just horrible. You know? It is only a day, it's like two days since I watched that, so we can chat. Um, he says, oh no, no, that's okay. Um, so David, the fascinating thing I found about that particular um, program was, how, I did not know, I had no idea how many times different kinds of reinventing of yourself you did with all these different, you had so many different bands and you did like the Beatles kind of music and the rock and roll stuff and the old school stuff. And then along the way, trying to find your, your particular way, unique way to express yourself. There were so many adaptations of you. And so I had no idea. It kind of seemed like you're trying to fit in. Is that accurate? Would you say that that was accurate? Like early on, can you talk to me about that a little bit? He says, isn't it, he's smoking by the way, he has a cigarette and people ask me about that too. When I see spirit with cigarette, they're like, well, how do they, how can they smoke? Because they take on persona, you guys, like they're gonna show up so that my brain doesn't prohibit them from showing up. If they show up like some spooky thing, I, Bridget would be running screaming. <laughs> So they have to show up in a form that is acceptable to me, that I can describe to you, so it'll be acceptable to you in your brain as well. So he is smoking. I don't know if he smoked later in life, but he's smoking. And he's saying, yes, isn't it everyone's goal to find themselves? He says, isn't it everyone's goal? We really all have the same goal. That, that is indeed true. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you, viewers, agree? Yes. To find themselves. And he says, I always knew it. I knew what I was born to do, that I was born to be a, uh, what, what word are you gonna use? Performer, entertainer, musician? He says all of the above. Performer would be the most likely. He says, I share that with Freddie Mercury. The idea of being a performer, I, I really gravitated toward that. And he says, it is true, I wanted to be a star because I was already, like I was already a star, like I already had. Inside of me, I just needed to find a way to, to squeeze that out, to really show the fullness of what was inside of me, 
to others so that they could see. And then he says, he says um, not for judgment. It wasn't about being accepted when, although I know that you, uh, you heard about my mom and he says mom, kind of M-U-M mom, like my mom and there was questions about the, my relationship and, and my need for approval, parental approval, so to speak, he says. It's not so much about that uh, as it is about really knowing that there's more to you. Really knowing that there's more, there's, there's more inside there. And not quite being sure how to translate that, you know. Translate that so that others can, can and, and accept, accept it. I, when I say that, I don't mean like me, but so that others can, can really get it, you know, can get the vibe that you're sharing. And that's a really important part for a performer is to make that connection with that audience that is not spoken. It's, it's just, it's a felt thing. It's really vibrational or, f- or frequency based. And so I'm seeing, he's showing me sacred geometry, sacred geometry. So like, um, if you're familiar with sacred geometry at all, it's like Metatron's cube or a Merkaba or Makaba, however you want to pronounce it. A flower of life or a seed of life different. I wish I had something that kind of looked like sacred geometry. I'm looking around to see if I have anything that looks like a sacred geometry. I usually have something here sitting on the table that's a flower of life. It's like interconnecting circles as one. Um, geez, I'm looking around to see. I usually have stuff, but I just got back from travel, so I don't, I put my things away <laughs> so that they don't get messed with when I'm gone. I'm in the kitchen at the kitchen table, so I put things away nice and neatly. <laughs> so, of course, I didn't drag them out, but he's showing me sacred geometry. So, sacred geometry, when I'm in session with you, I see it a lot. Remember, I'm clairvoyant, so I see. So, the sacred geometry is like the grids referred to as grids, and those are harmonizations or vibration levels of energy. And sometimes you can hear them through toning or singing bowls or music. Music is vibrational healing, totally and completely a connection channel, completely a connection channel. You've heard that from other musicians that I've interviewed, not just Bowie, right? But Freddie Mercury and Prince have also said that as well, as well as others. And the sacred geometry is what he shows me, and he has that ability to resonate with a higher vibration or an ascension level that's higher than what your brain can understand. So instead of using words, there are shapes that are used. And the interconnection or the overlapping of the grid systems and the shapes that you use is like a symbol for the mind to connect a grid pattern. And a grid pattern is like the energies of the chakras and the way they flow. And in fact, if you do yoga at all or meditation, you'll be familiar with the chakras. They actually have sacred shapes identified with the chakras, which also have sacred sounds identified with them as well. And so there's a whole bunch of like science and art and vibrational frequency information that's available about this for you if you're interested in sacred geometry. But David is showing me sacred geometry and he's showing it to me at my third eye. Oh, just, he kind of laughs. He's like, oh, you're trying to go on a tilt-a-whirl now, aren't you? Like a spinny ride, a spiral ride. (laughs) No, 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 no. When I move my hands, when I'm in session, you can't see me because I'm on the phone with you usually when I'm doing this, but when I'm moving my hands and I do things in the energy field, it moves energy. So when I was doing that to just show you, it was making me a little... A little like motion sick in the head a little bit. Okay, 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 okay. Back on topic, back on topic, David. So you're showing us sacred geometry shapes and you're saying, you're talking about acceptance or translating information into a way that we in human form can receive it. And so he's showing me shapes, sacred shapes or sacred geometry. So David, as an afterlife spirit, are you incarnated? No, no, not yet. He says, no, not yet. I set the next round out, he says. (laughs) I set the next one out, well, round out. He says, I'd like to see, I'd like to be in the audience for, for a bit of a time, he says. <laughs> Good, excellent choice, just like Prince, <laughs> just like Freddie. All right, all right, okay. All right, so um, as an afterlife spirit, 
is one of your roles. How it, okay, so when I connect with you, David, one of your, your vibration is so ascended. And what I mean by that is translated through these things like symbols, through sacred geometry, sacred shapes, sacred shapes. And it feels like you work with energy at that level, you know? And he says it's an expression. It's an expression. It's just another medium like, um, like an artist would choose, you know, different types of textures and such, uh, uh, things like that, of that sort. That's how you could uh, describe it, he says. Different textures, um, different palettes, different types of, of mediums, like an art. All right, so is it true that you do work with sacred geometry? He says, yes, yes. That's, he says, that's one of my primary methods of communication, is sacred geometry. So if you're interested in that, if you are a fan of David Bowie's and you want to connect with him at a higher ascended level, um, would you say you're an ascended master? See, in our human minds, we use different levels to organize or categorize, and some people would say label, um, energy. And it's just a way to kind of file or understand, organize information. Um, are, would you consider yourself an ascended master? And he kind of laughs. He says, ascension is a process that not many uh, attain. He says, not many attain. He says, I find it quite, uh, quite amusing that in a human form, the mind would even ask the question of ascension or even, even if the soul desires it, the mind cannot possibly fathom its attainment. It cannot possibly, but, and he's showing me like the, the space odd, oddity, um, like album cover and stuff, you know, when he, when he got a lot of his, uh, uh, when he got a lot of his fame, you know, the Major Tom thing and stuff. And now I know that, you guys, because <laughs> I saw that little program, so I know. And so when he shows me this, I understand what the space suit and the, that, what that means, because to me that means something different if I didn't know the context. So he shows me that and he says, it is so, it is very much possible to travel with the mind in the imagination and to allow the spirit to access different levels of its development, its advancement, which is already developed. The spirit, he says, the spirit has already attained its maximum ascension levels. And it does not have to shed them in order to incarnate, which you might think because of the difference, variance in vibration, but it's not true, it's not true. He says, it's not true, it's not necessary. It's much easier for the human to understand this in a way of um, he says, sort of like getting high or a, a higher vibrational frequency that you feel as if your mind is altered in an altered state of consciousness, which can be achieved during a meditation or a sound healing because it's changing a vibration so that the mind, the thought patterning shifts out of its, its current mind waves of frequency and it, it goes beyond that. It goes into that gray space in between and when it's there, then it's possible to, to actually touch or reach the different levels of your soul's progression throughout the lifetimes that you've had. And it's not about going back necessarily. And it's not even about going forward or in the future. It's about accessing all of the levels through sort of a, a, a ball of, of connectors. And then again, he's showing me the ball, like a sacred shape, like a sacred soccer ball. That's what I say, a dodecahedron looks like a sacred soccer ball. You know what a soccer ball looks like? Think about it, you guys. What does a soccer ball look like, right? With the black and the white, like big um, geometric shapes. And then, I can't make them with my hands, but, and then imagine the shape still being there, but the, the white and the black piece is gone. And all you see is the connectors of the shapes. So you're holding this ball of light and the connectors are just like glowing. Um, lines of light and it's like a soccer ball with glowing lines of light. Imagine that, okay? That's what it looks like and he's showing me all the different layers and you have so much capacity in here to create or form or change or shift and truly anything's possible. It's like the universe within you and you can access those various levels of your, and he says, of your consciousness N knowing, knowing, actually forming it into knowledge that the mind can receive or accept just how I wanted to share as a person, as a human, what I knew that I had to share with people who could accept it and just know it by receiving it. It's the same thing. Your mind can do that 
when you're accessing through your own, own, um, what are you saying? I can't quite understand. Portal doesn't make sense. So can you choose a different word? Through your own pathways or passages. It's like your own, your own walking path. He says, you know, when you walk into the woods or you walk through a field and you walk and you, your feet tramp down the tall weeds or the grasses and there's sort of a path that only you make. And even if other people have come before you, you still widen the path or adjust it to your, your gate, you, your width, your personal need. And so it's your pathway or passageway that you create. That's an important part of this that I don't want to be lost, he says. The wisdom of knowing that you create the path is essential. So the ascension isn't something you attain or achieve outside of you or in some far off place, even in the cosmos and the universe. You don't, you don't travel someplace and get something and come back and you have it. It's something that is already within you and it's the whole universe, truly all the knowledge and wisdom that you need that you have attained over time anyway, is all accessible to you within. And in order to ac access that, you must utilize tools such as your imagination or altered states of consciousness like a meditation to be able to achieve that. That's how you would do it. That's, how, that's the safest way that you could do that. And he says, but it could blow your mind because it is difficult to translate things that are not concrete or contextual in nature or have structure in a way that the mind can actually understand. Thus you use, he says, so, so you use, thus, he says, thus, using the imagination and creative expression is the best way to communicate, to channel, to connect, to, to utilize all this wisdom and knowledge because it's all about relationship. It's purely about relationship. It is 100% about relationship. And because of that, that's why you're here. That's why you're a person. That's why you're interested in the, the, the afterlife reflections of <laughs> dead celebrities. And he says, of us ha of has been people, <laughs> people who have been, he says, <laughs> celebrities in the afterlife. And that pretty much sums that up. He's funny, by the way, you guys. He does have kind of a, a sharp sense of humor. I appreciate that very, very much. Yeah, yes, yes, very much so. All right. Wow, cool. Oh, awesome. Oh, David, it was totally unexpected to have you join me on my trip. And I completely appreciate the time I spent um, watching that program about you. And I mean, I have so many other questions also. And I want to ask you, like, as an artist yourself, or, you know, because I feel like I'm kind of an artist as an entrepreneur, I'm really creating my own path passageway and even though there's other people that do what I do nobody does it like me just like you and just like all the other wonderful celebrities artists actors entertainers that we connect with here at above life channel the same goes for them as well this is Bridget thank you so much for being here as a viewer you are very much appreciated remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. I hope you. I hope that we have done that today here in our channeling with David Bowie from The Afterlife. Remember, he's got a playlist, so be sure to check out that tab of the playlist. Also, I invite you to consider this as our closing. The purpose of life is to live it. And this, right here and right now, is your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.